You're watching Power Nation. Today on Music City Trucks, the guys from Carcass help kick off our fab work. And as always, we're having a blast. All right. Whoa! Get you. Then, while Brandon continues the fab, I'll tear down this Dana 60 front axle and build it into a worthy addition to Project Unbreakable. Hey, welcome to Music City Trucks. We've got our 1991 Suburban in here. We're making some pretty good headway on it. We've got a really fun day planned today. We've got a couple of guys in here to help us out. Some buddies of ours, Jimmy and Jeremy from our sister show, Carcass. Guys, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're all about efficiency in our shop, so anything we can do to help, we're at your disposal. And we both love square bodies, so this should be a fun little project. Cool, yeah, so the last time you saw this thing, we got it stripped down to the bare frame, which wasn't on our list of <laughs> no. things to do, but that's okay. Uh, and uh, got the frame painted up real nice, and Brandon even installed some pretty cool rock sliders. So we're calling this project Unbreakable, and to achieve that, we're doing one tons, four link coilover, and a bunch of fab work, which is what we're gonna be doing today. And the front bumper is kind of my baby, so Jimmy, with your CNC plasma skills, I think we could knock that front one out real quick. Let's do it. And Jeremy, that means you and I are on the rear. Let me show you what we got going on over here. All right, here. let's take a peek here. So this is just a sample of the two by four tubing we're gonna use. This is the same stuff Brandon used for the rock sliders, right. but we wanna make the bumpers out of these. So we wanna keep it, you know, a little bit of gap there between the, the barn doors so we have some clearance. You're gonna tuck it then, right? Yeah, maybe come off about the thickness of the of the tubing or maybe at least an inch. Okay. But we want to keep it pretty tight, yeah. So I think the easiest way to go about doing this then is just cut the chassis, square it up, yeah. and put a piece of tube on there and see what it looks like. All right, yeah, let's grab some tools. All right. All right. Get you? <laughs> Just a little bit. Wow, I like it. All right, so we just need to figure out what we're gonna do with these forward bars. I think we'll just lop these off later. All right, well then uh, let's go forward from here and see what it looks like. All right, Mark, what do you think of that angle? It looks good. It's about five degrees. Okay, yeah, so my idea with that is to, if we have a little bit of an angle here, that actually helps with our departure, uh, like, you know, if it lands on a rock. Right. So it acts as a rock slider and a bumper. That's not going anywhere. No, that's, that's fine right there. I like that. It looks pretty good. Yeah, and it lines up with the rocker too. And you're gonna come in and cut this anyways, exactly. and you're gonna cap that end off. We'll get to all that. Uh, I guess I can start cutting the other side out. Yeah, because you got a, a wheel well to deal with now. Yep, and spare tire. While you're doing that, I'm gonna get started on the spare tire carrier. Okay. Brought some tools down, it's gonna make our lives a whole lot easier. Awesome. So. For the spare tire carrier, we're gonna be using some pretty simple stuff. We're gonna use a swing away kit, some rectangular tubing, some round tubing, and we're gonna be using a wheel adapter. That way the boys can swing the tire away to get into the back of the Suburban. First step is to drill a couple holes. One thing on the front bumper is I wanna make it removable. Yeah. That way if you get any damage or whatever, mm -hmm. you can fix it. Um, I think we need to take this bracket off, so that means cut these four rivets. Yeah. That way we have a flat surface for the tube to sit on. Yeah, something too is if we actually tack the tube in here, we can actually use these holes as like a drill guide. That way we get our bolts and everything to line up perfect. Yeah. If we just set these kind of at zero degrees relative to the body, we'll just use like the three bottom holes and the two holes from the body mount. Maybe uh, 30 degrees. Okay. That looks pretty good. And we'll cut it at 15 and kind of 
do a little miter cut on this one so the edges match. It's looking like something. Well, we've got the extensions installed so the main part of our bumper is finished, but we've got the frame hanging down here where the original bumper was. So we either need to cut that off or make an extension. I think making an extension with this would be great because that's multi-purpose. We can mount a skid plate to it. We can put a hitch in there, pretty much whatever we want. While I'm working on the bumper, Jeremy is gonna whip us up a spare tire carrier. Looks like you got yours done and oh. so did I. Oh, that looks awesome. All right, ready? Yep. Ah, swinging. <laughs> nice. I figure next step is just lob the fenders off, figure yeah. out that angle. Oh, yeah. The fair lead needs to be probably right there. All right, so we got all of our measurements for stuff we need to cut on the plasma, so we should head down to the carcass shop and start cutting. Yeah. Thank you. This is looking pretty good. Just got to get it over to the plasma table, and we'll cut it out. All right, first of many pieces. Diamond plate. Yeah. This will be perfect for some steps. This is why we don't throw old metal away, because you just might be able to find a use for it someday. Like this diamond plate I'm putting on the front bumper. Done! Well, not really. <laughs> Brandon, I heard you say you were done. <laughs> uh, what'd you guys get accomplished here? Halfway done. We got the structure and all the bones put together. Brush guard and the, the fair lead cage is still in my head. <laughs> it looks really good, though. It's a good start. Yeah, and then I noticed under here these are sticking down. I guess you'll... Yeah, we're gonna lob those off and then make a skid plate that goes to the axle. I like it. Very nice. Very I like nice. the way it's going. You wanna see what we did out back? Yes. Yeah, you're gonna love it. Alright, look, we gotta get the this. whole view. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, guys. Dude. Oh, it follows the contour. Yeah, we talked like that. The tailgate. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for all your help. No problem. Uh, I mean, this was huge. Uh, and for the use of the tools and all that. Yeah. Can you leave this stuff? Keep the tools, bring okay. it back when you're done. Awesome. Thanks. Coming up next, now that we've got a great start with the carcass guys, Mark and I take the fab work to another level. Well, we lost our help on these bumpers, but I still got a lot of stuff to do and I got to build a brush guard, so I'm going to go bend some tubing. And I'm going to cipher what we need to do about the wheel openings. Definitely have to get the trim out of the way and get our excess cut off, but then we might as well open them up a bit. We're expanding the wheel openings because they're designed for the stock tire height. And since we're going with big tires and lots of suspension travel, we need all the room we can get. All right, we're gonna bend it to 90. We're going to be using inch and 5 eighths tubing for the main hoop on our brush guard. The theme is unbreakable, and the last thing we want is the inconvenience of a broken headlight, 
or a punctured radiator. For our headlight hoops, I bent up some inch and a half tubing and notched it to fit the contours of our main hoop. You can see I've already measured and marked where the tube's gonna land. Now, I tack it in first to make sure all the angles are right. Once I like where everything sits, it's time for finish welding, but I'll get to that later. Now that we're pretty much done cutting and tacking everything in on this project, I want to talk about the machine we've been using. It's a Forney 220 MP, which is a multi-process unit. It does MIG, stick, and even TIG. You can also plug this thing into a 110 or 220, and it recognizes the volts that you put into it. So all you have to do is plug it in, grab the wand, and literally just start welding. Now, this thing welds up to half-inch plate, which is more than perfect for our project, because we've been using 11 gauge and quarter inch plate. So I have a lot of welding to do, so let's start burning it in. Up next, while Brandon continues with the fab work, I'm stripping down this Dana 60. We are rocking and rolling on our 91 Suburban project that we're calling Unbreakable. We got a lot of fab work done today already with the help of the guys down in Carcass but there's still quite a bit left to do, a bunch of the finish welding and stuff like that. So Brandon's focusing on that, and while he's doing that, I'm gonna tackle the axle builds, specifically the front axle. This is a Dana 60. We do have a 14 bolt rear, but I'm not really gonna focus on that because the axle build's a little more complicated, and besides, Dana 60s kind of carry across the board. Uh, this does have a kingpin style setup, which is really highly sought after, but it does require some specific components, but other than that, Everything Dana 60 is pretty much Dana 60, whether you're talking about Ford, Dodge, or GM. That being said, there's a ton of aftermarket components available, no pun intended. Uh, everything from the axles to the diff, spindles, bearings, seals, gaskets, I mean, it's all there and we're gonna replace it all, all the way down to the wheel studs and even the brakes. We've even got a truss there we're gonna install, although we may not get to that today because I wanna focus on the tech of the axle build itself because it can be a little complicated. Now, since we do have all those new components, everything here has to go pretty much except the housing. So now, just gotta get dirty and make some noise. The fluid in this axle looked really good, but we're not really concerned with that because everything in here is gonna get replaced anyway. However, if you wanted to run a Dana 60 in your rig, you could keep it completely stock and it would provide you with plenty of strength and longevity. Cool. After draining the oil, we'll start disassembly by removing the locking hubs. Which will allow us to access the hub nuts Then the hub and spindle can be removed, followed by the axle shaft. The caps can be removed next, which frees up the diff. Then out comes the pinion. Now it's time for some kingpin fun. Now we told you before how popular these Kingpin Dana 60s are for off-roaders, but when it comes time to rebuild them, sometimes it can take a little bit of, gotta bring the heat, <laughs> persuasion. Woohoo! Ah. Up next, isn't setting up diffs so much fun? Time to build our front axle. All 
Well, I've made some pretty good headway on the Dana 60 front end build for our 91 Suburban Project Unbreakable. You probably saw all the things on the table here earlier, but I want to dig in a little bit deeper. We got everything here from Summit Racing, and let's start with the diff. 35 spline locker, all of the axles to accommodate that, including these massive joints to connect the inners and outers. And we've got some upgraded knuckles here. Uh, this is a big upgrade from the factory. And then everything else we need to get it assembled. Kingpin rebuild kits, bearings, seals, shims, hubs, spindles, and even this cast iron diff cover, which is a really nice upgrade. As for the housing itself, you saw earlier I was cutting some of the brackets off. Uh, I got all of the spring perches, the shock mounts, and even the steering stabilizer bracket off of there. Got it all ground down smooth, cleaned it up real good, and you can see I got some paint on it. That's just a weld through primer because we still need to install all of our four link, but that's going to be later on. Uh, we even have the truss back there that's got to get welded on. For now, I want to focus on getting the internals built, and I got it all cleaned out in there so it's ready for assembly. The first thing I'm going to put on, though, is the ring gear onto the diff. With the ring gear drawn onto the carrier, I put some red thread locker on the bolts and torque them to 110 foot-pounds. The outer pinion bearing race can be installed along with the axle seals. I think we're there. Well, this is the point in the process where we need to figure out pinion depth and we start with the inner pinion bearing. Now, what I would normally do is take this inner bearing race, drive it into the housing, and then use a setup bearing on the pinion here to figure out how many shims need to go between the gear and the bearing. But this axle's a little bit different. Actually, some Dana 60s are like this, some are not. The shims actually go behind the race in the housing. So what we need to do is have a setup race. And I just took the one that came out of here and ground it down so it'll slip in and out. And I took the shims that came out of here for a starting point. So we're going to put those in, and then the race, then the pinion, and that's where we'll start. We're going to temporarily install the outer bearing and yoke in order to check and adjust our setup. We're using some washers here so the lock nut doesn't fully engage. We'll drop the center section in, install the shims, and snug down the caps. We're using a dial indicator on the ring gear to measure the backlash. We've got about 12 thousandths, which is a good starting point. It's a little bit out of spec, but close enough to go ahead and check the pattern. And this one looks pretty good. Time for final assembly, which will start with driving in the inner pinion bearing race that I mentioned earlier. We'll press on the carrier bearings and the inner pinion bearing. With the pinion in the housing, the outer shims can be installed, followed by the outer pinion bearing, which needs to be driven on. Followed by the pinion seal, the yoke, and the nut, which gets tightened. Now's the time to check pinion preload. Ours is good, so we can move on to installing the diff, carrier shims, and caps. The caps need to be torqued to 80 pound-feet. And now it's time to get our final measurements, starting with backlash, which is 10 thousandths, just within spec. We'll run another pattern, and I'll take it. With the hard part done, it's time to move on to the knuckles. And bring this Dana 60 into the 21st century and make it worthy of Project Unbreakable. While we're freshening and strengthening this axle where we can, there are some components we need to reuse, like the caliper bracket, dust shields, and hub housings. We cleaned them up and gave them a coat of black paint to keep them looking new. Ah! 
With the new bearings in place, we can install the hub nuts, followed by the locking hubs. And now, we're headed to the finish line. Oh yeah. We're using Yukon Gear's Hardcore Locking Hub Set. You'll notice the assembly is a little different than the OE style locking hubs, but these are stronger, and that's just what we want for Unbreakable. Well, I know these wheels and tires aren't gonna get us anywhere, but I gotta see what they look like under here. And it's gonna give you a better idea of what this rig's gonna look like when we're all done. And that's probably about where ride height's gonna be. So I'm really excited about it. But I feel like we got a lot done today. I mean, I'm exhausted. Yeah, uh, I mean, pretty much all the fabrication is done besides the suspension. And speaking of suspension, our front 14 inch coilovers on the ground, along with Pat's 383 stroker that he built us. Yeah, that thing's awesome. We'll dig in more about that next time, along with all the other supporting components, transmission, transfer cases, those axles. I got the Dana 60 all done, finally. Uh, but I do have to get that 14 bolt built. I'll work on that later. We'll get all that under the truck. Oh, and you're gonna paint the truck too. <laughs> yeah, so if you think we got a lot accomplished today, make sure you come back and see where we take Unbreakable.